Hi, I'm Kelly Taylor, and welcome to Cold Air Intake. Our story today begins in 1920 in Hiroshima, Japan, where Jujiro Matsuda launched a company called Toyo Kogyo Company, making of all things cork. In 1930, they transitioned into making three-wheeled pickups called the Mazda Go. Decades of minivan and truck production followed until 1960 when they built the R360 Coupe, their first passenger car. Through then, they started developing the rotary engine, which appeared in the RX-2, RX-3, RX-4, and of course the RX-7 and RX-8. Still my favorite Mazda cars. All of which brings us to today and this, the 2021 Mazda CX-5 100th Anniversary Edition. Let's take a look. Okay, let's get ready to drive. Heated seat on, heated steering wheel on, lock heater off. So the 2021 Mazda CX-5 100th Anniversary Edition starts life as a signature model, which had been the top of the line. The additions for the 100th Anniversary Edition are primarily cosmetic. You have the red garnet leather seats. You have a pure white armrest, console accent, and center armrest. You have the 100th anniversary badge on the uh, quarter panel and on the wheel center caps. Plus it's embossed into the headrest with the signature trim level being the donor vehicle for the 100th anniversary model. That means it comes with the 2.5 liter dynamic pressure turbo four cylinder, which is rated for 250 horsepower at 5,000 RPM on 93 octane fuel or 227 on 87 octane. As with all Mazda automatic transmissions, it's a six speed with paddle shifters and sport mode. Okay, let's get ready to go for a drive. Okay, so you're thinking, all these changes for $1,500 over the signature model just seem like they're cosmetic changes I don't really care about. What's the deal? Okay, that's a fair question. Um, so let's just remember that the CX-5 underneath is one heck of a little crossover. It's a lot of fun to drive, handles really sharply, and it doesn't drive like a truck at all. So if you're looking for a truck-like vehicle, this is not the one for you. Mazda has really tried to set itself apart from the competition by going for a premium look. They use high quality materials and, and really slick designs. The CX-5 sort of separates itself from the competition, the RAV4 and the new Nissan Rogue by not being very butch. It's very much a, a passenger vehicle. It's not trying to go for that hard off-road look like some Jeeps or even the RAV4 in certain trim levels. So the CX-5 is gonna start at around $30,000, freight and PDI included. The Signature Edition is $43,000, and you can look to about $44,000 uh, and change for the uh, 100th Anniversary Edition. So for this edition of Cold Air Intake, we're taking some video out here at Spring Hill Winter Park. Check out the skiing action. Okay, so you might be thinking the Signature Edition is 45500 by the time you add freight and PDI, which is about $1,500 more than the Signature model, and these are all cosmetic changes that I don't really care about. What's the deal? Okay, that's a fair question, and uh, if, if it doesn't matter to you, then uh, just understand that the CX-5 underneath is a pretty slick little crossover. It's got a really cool design, really neat premium interior, 
I would put this interior up against the Mercedes or a BMW any day. And it's got all wheel drive. It's one of the better all wheel drives out there. It constantly monitors road conditions and will adjust torque as needed. Also, it preloads a torque on startup so that uh, you get full traction when you want to get going. So if you're not into the signature or the um, 100th anniversary edition, the uh, CX-5 starts really well equipped at about $30,500, uh, including freight and PDI. One thing I really like about Mazdas is they are exceptionally fuel efficient and they get that efficiency without any of the gimmicks that I don't really like, such as a continuously variable transmission, which feels a little bit like you're driving a snowmobile sometimes, or uh, auto stop, stop start, where the engine dies when you're at a stoplight and then starts up again as soon as you take your foot off the brake. Those can be really jarring and they really save just a minute amount every time they do it. So Mazda has been able to get away without any of those annoyances simply by light weighting. They take care of every gram that goes into this vehicle. They even hollow out bolt heads when they don't need the extra strength. The Skyactiv engine uses uh, higher compression than we're used to with the gasoline engine. And, and that's thanks to some of the tricks that they've done with the uh, top of the piston, with the design of the cylinder, uh, also with the porting of the exhaust. Because uh, if you don't get the porting of the exhaust right, you get what's called uh, pumping losses because you've got pressure from one cylinder, you know, finding its way into another cylinder through that cylinder's open exhaust port and that reduces efficiency. Plus they've been able to also achieve really good efficiency while only using a six-speed automatic transmission. And the benefit there is you have far less weight in the vehicle, you know, compared to the um, seven, eight, nine, and 10-speed automatics of some other vehicles. So with the Signature, and by extension, the 100th anniversary, you get all the toys, okay? You get navigation, you get heated seats, cooled seats, heated steering wheel, automatic keyless entry, which is really cool. When you get out of the car somewhere and you're walking away, it just automatically locks itself. It knows the key is leaving the vehicle. You get the LED adaptive headlights, which steer the headlights into the direction of travel to light up your path, no matter which way you're turning. The two other things that you get when you get the CX-5 100th anniversary edition, you get a 143rd scale model of the R360, which I mentioned was their first passenger car. Plus, you get a fairly detailed photo book, coffee table book, detailing Mazda's history, going back to its origins as a cork manufacturer. And the handling of the CX-5 is, is superb. It's aided by McPherson struts up front, multi-link independent rear, four-wheel disc brakes, plus it has G-Vectoring Control Plus. So what G-Vectoring Control Plus does is when you turn in, it takes a little bit of torque out of the engine, which helps plant the vehicle forward, puts a bit of weight forward on the front wheels, helps them turn, dig in and make the turn. When you start to unwind the turn, brakes the outside wheels, which helps bring the car back around straight in line. Now the benefits of that are a few. One, you don't have as many corrections when you're driving down the road. So it's, it's a little bit less fatiguing for your uh, passengers as well. The making the smooth, the, the turn in and turn out smoother means they're not waving back and forth as much, which also helps reduce fatigue. So thanks for checking out our review of the 2021 Mazda CX-5 100th Anniversary Edition. Be sure, be sure to click on like and subscribe at the bottom. And for cold air intake, I'm Kelly Taylor.